I'm Pat Olson. Welcome to another edition of Inside USF Basketball. The Dons have won three of their last five ball games as they try and position themselves up the standings in the West Coast Conference. They come off a road win at Pepperdine where they made 14 three-point shots. And they're next on the road at Brigham Young. A light schedule this week, just one ball game, that Saturday contest against the Cougars in Provo. We sit down with USF head coach Rex Walters and look ahead to that BYU matchup. Well, Coach, as we jump into it, uh, look back at your last weekend of action. Uh, last week you played St. Mary's at home, played them tough uh, down the stretch, and then uh, a nice win for you uh, on the road that uh, Malibu. What do you take uh, from those two ball games uh, against the Gales and then the Pepperdine Waves? Well, uh, you know, against St. Mary's, I don't think we rebounded it well enough. Um, I thought they really beat us up inside in the first half. And, uh, you know, we played hard and we did some things that, towards the end of the game that got us back into it, but, but um, obviously wasn't enough. Pepperdine, I thought we. We did some better things defensively. Uh, we got more comfortable with some of the things we we're really trying to accomplish on the defense end of the floor. We did shoot the ball well. I liked our guys' aggressiveness. We actually watched tape of it today. I was I was on the road yesterday recruiting. Um, we did some good things. You know, uh, defense. We still we still got a ways to go though. We're not matching the number of defensive clips as, as offensive clips. But uh, you know, I thought some guys really stepped up for us in the Pep Pepperdine game, which was good to see. You like to use the term let it rip. We've talked about that before. And it seemed like your guys uh, down the stretch against Pepperdine just on offense let it rip and just played. They, they did. You know, it, it's always a fine line, you know, and I, I know I'm sure the players feel that way. Sometimes there's a fine line between let it rip and, uh, you know, taking, uh, taking bad shots. You know, you, you, there's, there's a fine line. And I thought for the most, for the most part our guys uh, have a better understanding now that we're – you know, we're, we're in February. They have a better understanding of, of what we as a staff feel is a good shot and uh, then aggressively shooting them. You know, I, I do feel uh, it's better to aggressively shoot bad shots than it is to tentatively shoot good shots. But uh, saying all that, I, I want to I feel like good shooters taking good shots are going to make them. So uh, I, I think that against Pepperdine, it was, it was pretty good watching the game. Uh, offensively, uh, you know, I, I liked the shot selection. I liked our aggressiveness as well, shooting those shots. Discuss the growth of uh, Frank Rogers because, uh, you know, he eventually emerged uh, against the Waves. You know, we talked about him earlier in the year. He's got length. I think he can cause a lot of problems for opponents as they drag the lane. He had a big block shot in that game, and he's a guy that can give you that, that element along the front line with Tao Zhu and uh, Matt Christensen. He does. But, you know, people also need to be patient. I mean, he, he's giving up. Uh, 20 to 30 pounds a night, especially against the upper uh, half of our league when you talk about uh, Santa Clara, Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and, and BYU. He's giving up a lot of size and weight. It wasn't as much of a factor against Pepperdine. He, he needs to have a great spring, uh, a great summer. He needs to put on 15 to 20 pounds minimum, minimum for him to be the player that we th think he can be. Saying that, he was, he was really good down, took a charge. Uh, down the stretch on a baseline drive, had, had two big block shots, uh, hit a big three for us, had a nice dunk off of a pass from Avery, John, uh, Avery Holmes, I should say, um, um, and, and did some really good things. I, I thought he made a great, people think I'm crazy, he made, a, he made probably the best post feed we've had all year uh, to Cole Dickerson, and Cole finished with a layup. And, you know, it, it's not a question of uh, ability with Frank, it's going to be a question of is he going to put the time in in the weight room, is he going to eat the right foods and put on the right type of weight? If he does that, he can be a really good uh, four slash five for us. If he doesn't, he'll be a he'll be a five to ten minute player for us. I think and I hope that he wants more than that five to ten minutes because he should he should aspire to be a starter and uh, a guy that's competing for all league type of goals as a as a junior and senior. Another young guy that we've seen a lot of growth from uh, on your team is uh, your young guard from uh, Salem, Oregon, uh, Avery Holmes. You talked about it in the post-game radio show. He's really, really been a very coachable guy for your team and, uh, you know, gets his teammates involved, and he seems to just get more and more confident with each and every ball game. He's, he's been unbelievably coachable, you know, uh, the, the last month and a half. Um, echo teaching, probably one of our best leaders, uh, and that's that's crazy to say that about a freshman. But in terms of uh, as at the point guard spot, uh, cheering his teammates on, rallying his teammates, leading and directing his teammates, uh, being an extension of the coach, um, he's been he's been phenomenal. And then you know you put that on top of the fact that he's playing really well as well. It's not you know uh, I'd like to think. 
those things tend to correlate. They, they tend to uh, kind of gather together. Uh, and he's playing really well. Shot the ball well, but but if he wouldn't have gone, if he would have gone one for four, I said, "Gosh, you played a really good floor game." Uh, he went four for four, so I said, "Gosh, you played a great game." Period. Um, so I'm really happy for him. You know, he's he's not 100% uh, healthy, and that, the biggest thing with him, as I talked about Frank, the biggest thing for Avery is getting. Uh, he's really explosive in high school. He he was a guy that that could get to spots, and he he, he hasn't captured that yet. He had an injury in high school, and. Uh, it wasn't really detected until he got here how serious it was. and uh, He's getting closer and closer to 100%, and then hopefully in the spring and summer uh, he has a great one. You've got the BYU Cougars coming up uh, this weekend on the road in, in Provo. Uh, preview that contest for us. That's obviously a talented team, but uh, here in this building on the home floor, you had a chance to beat them. You led uh, the first 33 minutes of the ball game. Well, you know, every team in our league plays better at home. You know, we play better at home. Um, saying all that, we, we've had some good wins on the road as of late. Uh, BYU is, is 10 to 15 points better at home, the same way Gonzaga, St. Mary's are, you know, and, and um, uh, we'll have to deal with their zone defenses. They're changing. Dave does a really good job with changing defenses. Obviously, it, it all starts offensively uh, with Brandon Davies and Tyler Hawes. They're, they're inside, outside punch, and then the X factor is always Carlino when he's playing at a high level and, and scoring the way he's capable, they become very difficult to guard. So, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great challenge. It, it's, it, I talked to our guys, that there's no team in our league that we fear. You know, there's no team in this league that we feel we can't beat. Um, it's gonna come down to execution, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, making defensive stops and rebounds and, and obviously uh, getting the ball where it needs to go on the offensive end. Let's jump to their backcourt first because you mentioned both uh, Haas and Carlino. How do you get those guys uncomfortable? Uh, Haas, if he gets in a rhythm, is really difficult to slow down. And Carlino has had some really good shooting games uh, against USF. I think Dave coached the way he probably wanted to play. You know, when you talk about let it rip, they really let it rip offensively. They, they're very free-flowing. Uh, uh, they want to play in the first 10 seconds of shot clock. Uh, Carlino uh, has... Uh, and, and Haas both, they'll shoot, they'll shoot quick shots, quick contested shots. They're very difficult to guard. You've got to get them out of certain areas of the court. You've got to do a great job in ball screen defense. Haas will post you up. He'll get you on shuffles uh, to post up and also off double downs. You've got to try to be physical with both of them, and although Haas has got a man's body. Um, but, uh, you know, those are things that you try to do. You try to throw different people on them, at, you know, Obviously, Tim Dirksen will, will, will get uh, a majority of the matchup with, with Tyler, and Timmy doesn't back down. It's a great thing about Tim, but um, um, it, it's definitely a challenge. This is the point in the season where um, you, know, you have usually a rhythm. You get two, two ball games a week. This week, you've just had the one game. What have you done to keep your team fresh? And also, bear in mind, maybe keeping them off their legs because we are into February. Well, Sunday, we were off. Uh, you know, I got a chance to spend time with family, watch a little bit of tape. Uh, hopefully, our guys got off their feet a little bit, got a chance to spend some time with each other away from the court. Um, uh, we did practice light. Uh, I say light, and it was a hard 45 minutes, all defensive stuff. And then I left. I went. Uh, I had to fly uh, to the East Coast and, and watch the uh, uh, a basketball game and then we came back today and today was you know it's one of those after after day off practices you know our guys played really hard but we weren't quite in sync uh, didn't go long watched some tape went for about an hour and 25 uh, talked a little bit about some of their changing defenses uh, talked a little bit of, put in a couple new little wrinkles offensively um, but uh, it, it was a, it was a solid practice you know and and uh, Tomorrow we'll get after it again. It'll probably be somewhere between an hour, hour and 30. Uh, high intensity, a lot on the defensive end. Uh, I'm like scratching my head, I'm always talking, gosh, we really guard it in practice and then it's not always translate to the game. But, but um, um, you know, and then Friday, we, we actually fly out Friday morning, uh, fly out to Salt Lake, a little bit of drive to Provo and we'll have a, maybe an hour practice, uh, walk through stuff and obviously go over some stuff for, for, that we want to do. Coach, best of luck against the Cougars.